All right, so we've, we've talked about the trig functions, and we've talked about sine being the opposite over the hypotenuse, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we learned how to punch in angles uh, into our calculator and get the ratio in decimal form. You can do that for sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, et cetera. And we learned how to get the angle if we know the ratio by hitting the negative one button. And so we're punching in that ratio. Did all that. We figured out how, if we had a right triangle, we could figure out any given side using the trig function or the given angle if we know two of the sides, the ratio, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then we went through looking at trig in a coordinate plane and looked at those aspects. Now we're going to kind of continue along the coordinate plane idea. And we're going to figure out another way to represent angles. All right, so, you know, way, way back, we think because of the concept of they thought that there were 360 days in a year and they would mark off their years in 360 days, it made sense to mark a circle into 360 degrees. 360 days in a year, 360 degrees in a circle, and that was the concept, and that's kind of, we believe, where all that began. And, you know, we use degrees, and you guys are well more, uh, very much more versed in degrees than you are in another way of measuring degrees, and that's radians. So that's what we want to do today. So besides degrees, angles can be measured in radians. R-A-D-I-A-N-S, radians. It's just another way of looking at how much a circle is opened up, or how much, I'm sorry, an angle is opened. That's all it is. And again, in the beginning, they figured, let's cut this circle into 360 slices. I'm glad our, my pizzas aren't cut into 360 slices. It'd be like half a bite each. That would be bad. Hey, you can slice the pie any way you want. Well, someone said, hey, there's a better way to slice this pie. And let's slice it into radians instead of slicing it into degrees. And hence, we have radians. Now, your calculator has a radian button. You do have to be careful to make sure that when you're thinking you're in degrees, you're in degree mode. And when you're thinking you're in radians, you're in radian mode because the two don't mix, right? Just like, it, it you know, there's, um, you know, uh, 12 inches in a foot, but how many inches are there in a meter? Uh, well, they're different units, right? And so the same concept here, radians, another way of looking at it. All right, so what, it, what basically is a radian? A radian is the opening of the angle when the radius equals the arc length. When the radius equals the arc length. So if you look to the right at the illustration here, the length of this radius, whatever it is, is the same as the length of this arc measure. And if I had time, I would do it. I don't have time. But I could take a piece of string, and I could stretch it from the center of the circle to that point there to measure the radius. And then I could take that same string and, and uh, move it around the arc, and it would exactly give you the same length as the arc. That's what we're talking about. Uh, for the measure of a radian. So what is a radian? It's the angle opening when the radius equals the arc length. Now, don't do this in your notes because it'll just muddy the water, but here's the point. If the circle were smaller, I got news for you. This radius equals that arc length. They're, they stay proportional. I don't care how big the circle was. It's still the same amount of opening. The radius is still equal to the arc length. No matter how big or small the circle is, it doesn't really matter. That amount of opening is when the radius equals the arc length. All right, so that's the concept. That's the idea. All right, so when S equals R, then the angle opening is one radian. And it's always about just the way it looks there on your paper and there on the screen. That's the amount of, of opening of one radian. We'll get into how many degrees and all that stuff in a little bit. Okay, so let's try to figure some things out. All right, the measure of the angle in radians 
and you know our our angle is going to be theta it could be beta it could be alpha it could be an x it could be a t all right just just theta represents the angle right just like it represented the angle when we're talking degrees no different there all right so remember the the measure of the angle is going to be the arc length divided by the radius so in reality theta equals s over r now whenever you do this the angle is in radians 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 so if you could measure the arc length and you could divide it by the radius in this situation you would get one well, not every angle is opened up to one radian, and you get varying different answers, all different possibilities. All right, when the measure of the angle is in radians, here's that relationship. If you take what I just did right here, and instead you solve it for S, the arc length, you get this key formula, and that's why it's in a blue box. S equals R theta. S equals R theta, and that is a key formula. So the arc length S, and don't miss the fact that the arc length is S, right? Right? That's the arc length is S. If you take the radius and you multiply it times the angle, you'll get the arc length. And I'm going to take my red here and make sure that you, I'm going to put in radians. Hey, the formula only works when theta is in radians. You go higher for you guys. The formula is only going to work if the angle's in radians. Does it work if the angle's not radians? So this is the radian formula. And like any equation where you have three unknowns, if you know two of them, you can solve for the third. So if we know the radius and we know the angle opening in radians, we can tell you the arc length. If we know the arc length and we know the angle opening in radians, we could tell you the radius. If we know the radius and we know the arc length, we could tell you the measure of the angle in radians, right? Any of those three, we can solve. Are you with me? I see semi-comatose out there. That shouldn't be anything major, right? You're just solving the equation for any of the three things. And look, this equation is really a key thing. Anything that revolves around this formula comes into play. How many revolutions will a motor make uh, in the course of traveling so much distance? Oh, a revolution problem. That's this formula. Bicycle wheels, this formula. How far will a car travel if the diameter of the wheels are 24 inches, blah, blah, blah? Oh, that's this formula. All kinds of applications of anything that is circular and rotates involves this formula so it's really a big one it's really an important one and really something to get to know we'll apply it at the end of the lesson all right note number two number two there are and this is the key to everything thank you windows there are two pi radians in a complete circle there are two pi radians in a complete circle. Two pi? What in the world is that? All right, somebody take your calculator and multiply two times pi for me and yell out the answer. All right, and we'll round off right there, 6.28. There are 6.28 radians in a complete circle. What? It went from a nice round 360 to 6.28? What in the world's up with that? We don't like that. Well, we don't like the 6.28, but we love the 2 pi. We love the 2 pi. So now let's break down a circle using that 2 pi. So again, remember, don't write this in your notes. One time around is 2 pi, right? Complete revolution is 2 pi. So let's go halfway around. If all the way is round is 2 pi, halfway around is... Very good. I'll take Sicilian, please. All right. So halfway around this pi. I would write these in your notes if I were you. These are key increments that everybody should know. All right. If halfway around is pi, what's a quarter of the way around? Pi over 2. 
right? Half a pi. So 90 degrees is pi over 2, half pi. All right, so let's think of it this way. If 90 is pi over 2, 1 half pi, and 180 is 2 halves pi, then 270 is 3 halves pi, right? So 3 pi over 2. 1 half, 1, uh, 2 halves, 3 halves, and all the way around is 4 halves, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, right? So we broke. we can break it up that way. All right, let's go to 45 degrees. What's half of a half? All right, it is a fourth. So 45 degrees is pi over 4. All right, so it'll help if we count in fourths. So 45 is one-fourth pi. 90 is two-fourths pi, right? So 135 is three-fourths pi, right? Three pi over 4. 180 is 4 fourths pi, right? We already got that. So 225 is 5 fourths pi, so 5 pi over 4. 270, 6 fourths, 315, 7 fourths. 7 pi over 4 for 315. And we've got all of our radians. By the way, why are we doing 45s? Because of a 45, 45, 90 triangle and the exact values we can get for the trig ratios. Right? we got to tie that together now in radians instead of degrees. And therefore, the other circle is important. We're going to do 360. I'm, I'm sorry, we're going to do 30 and 60 degree angles. So you can do the exact same thing. However... All right, let's just look at 90, right? So 90 was pi over 2, half a pi. What, what do you do if you split a half a pi into thirds? What's a, half, what's a third of a half? You got no problem with a half of a half. What's a third of a half? All you have to do is multiply a half times a third, all right? That's all you got to do to do a third of a half, all right? Multiply a half times a third, and you get a sixth. So 30 degrees is, oh, this should be green, pi over six. That's one-sixth pi radians. Now, look, this isn't one-sixth of a radian. It's one-sixth times pi. So it's 3.14 divided by six which is about a half of a radian, right? Close. It's about a half. 3.14 divided by 6. A little bit more than a half of a radian. But pi over 6 is exact. All right, so watch. 1 sixth. Next would come 2 sixths. But we're going to reduce that, right? So here, I'm going to write it both ways because it will help you guys later on. So this is pi over 3, right? So you got one six, next comes two sixths, then comes three sixths, which of course is pi over two. We already know that, right? 90 degrees is three sixths. So next is four sixths. So 120 is four pi over six, which is two thirds pi, two pi over three. Next one is five sixths, five pi over six. Next one is six, six. I'm just going to leave it that way, not even reduce it. So what's 210? Say it if you know it. Seven, six, right? We're just working our way around. We're counting in sixths. 240 is eight sixths over, um, eight pi over six, which reduces to four thirds. Eight pi over six reduces to four thirds. I'm just going to leave 270 as 9 pi over 6. Of course, you already know what that reduces to. Right? I'm just going around. 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 4 thirds, 9 pi over 6. Next comes 10 pi over 6. And that reduces to 5 pi over 3. 10 pi over 6, reducing to 5 pi over 3. And then finally, 11 pi over 6.
go all the way around, you get to 12 pi over 6, and again, that's 2 pi, right? So with breaking it down like this, we could be able, we can figure out all the 30 degree intervals all the way around a complete circle. And we have exact answers because pi is there. And we have an exact thing, and that's what we want. We want exact. So any 45 degree angle all the way around, we can be exact with the angle. Any um, 30 multiple, which is 30, 60 all the way around, we can be exact with the radians. All right, but please don't miss this point. I'm going to go back here, and this is going to be ugly because I have to draw it. But let's just draw one more circle right here. Oops, let's make that in red. So a radian is 57.29, I think, 6 degrees. So about like this is one radian, right? About almost 60 right, degrees. So another 60 is about 120. So there's a second radian. We're just a tad shy of 180 is your third radian. All right, and we're just going in these 57 degree increments. One, two, three, four. That one's a little bit off. Five, six. All right, there's our sixth one. And you got 0.28 radians left over if you went that way, right? Just want to make sure you understand that there's a little over six radians in a complete circle. But we don't want to do it that way. We really want to think with pi because pi gets us exact. Exact. And that's how we're going to use it. Right. So again, you're going to have to come back to that and take a look at that and let that sink in a little bit into your brain. Because again, we're talking another language. We're talking radians all of a sudden instead of degrees. And that's got to sink in. All right, this part you're going to find to be easy. Should most students have no trouble with this whatsoever? You also have a calculator button here as well. But look, it's so simplistic. Uh, it's re it's really easy to understand. Converting between degrees and radians. So that we're going to go um, this first time degrees to radians. All right. So we want to go from degrees to radians. Does radians have pi involved with it? See all those pies? Lots of pi. All right. Does radians have pi involved with it? Yes. So the top is pi. Multiply by pi and simply divide the pi by 180. That will now get you from degrees into radians. But please notice I said leave your answer as a fraction. We do want these to be exact. We don't want decimal roundoffs. And therefore, we're going to leave it exactly as a fraction we are going to reduce. So convert 100 degrees, no sweat. Multiply by pi over 180. So just reduce, knock out the zeros. 10 on the top, 8 on the bottom. About a 5 pi over 9. And again, this is in radians. Some abbreviate RAD, somebody, some abbreviate just R. That's for all the pirates. Right, so some abbreviate RAD, some abbreviate just R. Some don't put anything. And assume, hey, 5 pi over 9, that's got to be a radians. All right, so look, um, you know, we're 100 degrees is 5 pi over 9. This is more than one radian. Take 5, multiply it times 3, that's 15. 15 divided by 9, that's more than 1, yes? So we're over one radian in, in opening, all right? And rightly so, 100 degrees. If you'll, if you'll get in your mind that there's 57 degrees in a radian, then you'll be in great shape. And we'll do that here in a minute when we get the other way. All right, so number two, 275, piece of cake, right? You just keep doing this over and over again, right? Times pi over 180. How many nickels in a dollar? How many nickels in the dollar? You guys don't know how many nickels in the dollar? 20. All right. How many nickels in 80 cents then? Between 
16, right? So total in 180, a dollar 80, how many nickels? 36. All right, I'm just helping you reduce. Whatever. All right, so this thing ends up 55 pi over 36. Again, you do have to reduce, so you fractionally challenge people. All you're doing is factoring and reducing. I'm not going to go over how to reduce. It's too elementary. Okay, so again, same thing. Number three, time's sake, let's skip it. You're just going to multiply times pi over 180. All right, I'm not going to finish it. Just get doing the same thing every time. Reduce a 42 and an 18. That's pretty easy. How about if you have a negative? All right, just be careful. If it's negative, we're going to stay negative unless they want the positive coterminal angle. Hmm, interesting. All right, so reduce it. A 24 and an 18. Uh, 3 times 6 and 4 times 6. So what do we got? Negative 4 pi over 6, and which is what? A negative 2 pi over 3? Am I thinking right? No, I'm not thinking right. I'm backwards. 6 pi over 4. 4 times 6. 3 times 6. What in the world? 4 thirds. That's what happens when you go fast. Negative 4 pi over 3, right? 24, 4 times 6. 18, 3 times 6. Negative 4 pi over 3. What if they wanted the positive angle there? How many radians in a complete circle? Say it if you caught it already. 2 pi. And again, I'll try to keep repeating that so it begins to stick in your brain. Can you do 2 pi minus 4 pi over 3? Common denominator, 2 pi would be 6 pi over 3. Minus 4 pi over 3 would leave you. 2 pi over 3 would be the positive angle that goes with that. Right? Not a big deal. Just remember 2 pi in a complete circle. All right? That's not a problem. A lot of times we'll just ask you to convert straight. But when you have to, then do that. All right, how about the other way? Well, the other way, you just flip it. you got to get rid of the pi, so you do 180 over pi. Just flip it. So to go from radians to degrees, you do 180 over pi. In this situation, we will get decimal answers because degrees end up in decimals. So just multiply this thing by 180 over pi. Look, divide out the pies and just use your calculator. Don't take the time to reduce this because we're allowed to have a decimal here because it's degrees. When have you ever heard anybody say, I have 11 halves degrees? I, we don't talk that way, right? We got 5.5 .5 degrees. So this, we can get a decimal. So 180 divided by 4, this one ends up even. This is 45 degrees, right? Ah, hey, remember our circle a bit ago? If you look up what pi over 4 was, you'd see it was 45 degrees. Second one's a little bit off the wall. But again, we got to multiply by 180 over pi. Hey, you need your pies to go away. Got to get rid of your pi. So that's so that means the pi's got to go on the bottom. So just take your calculator, 13 times 180 divided by 9. Anybody got that? 260. All right, no decimals yet. Matter of fact, not until the last one. All right, I'm not going to do the third one. Same thing, right? 180 over pi, whatever it ends up. Be careful on number four. Number four always gets students. I don't know why, but it does. See, number four, they got rid of pi. They, they, they used a decimal round off for the radians. This is 5.91. Now, how many radians are there in a complete circle? 2 pi. So 2 pi is how many degrees? 360. So what are we expecting this to be in the range of? Like 3 to 340-ish, kind of, right? Maybe 350? Got an idea where you should be? Now keep that in your mind, right? So we're still going to do the exact same thing. 
it's still going to be 180 over pi only this time there's no pi to cancel out we have to keep pi and divide so it's 5.91 times 180 divided by pi all right somebody punch that out what do we get 338 point what six right and we usually do one decimal place for our degrees right 338 points is all oh, what we were expecting ah look at that remarkable all right so i'm going to do those last two problems here in a minute but let me just recap for you so radians is another way of measuring the angle opening when the radius equals the arc length we'll call that one radian it's real handy to break up circles in the radians using pi and it's real handy for 45 degrees and multiples of 30 degrees and those are all right there for you all right let's do one more thing here let's stick a number five up here and let's do one radian because everybody should know how many degrees in one radian so what do you do well it's in radians we're converting to degrees so multiply by 180 over pi so how many degrees are there in one radian and you got 57 points is it 296 295 296 all right I can never i always want to say 296 and i second guess myself look do you have to memorize that number no you could Take 180 and divide it by pi, right? Isn't that what you did? 1 times 180 is 180 divided by pi, 57.296, right? What was the other thing you guys keep doing? Oh, what's the value of E? It's E to the first power. Just punch your button, your E button with 1 as the exponent, and it'll tell you 2.71828, all right? It's just E to the first power. How do you remember how many degrees in one radian? 180 divided by pi. You don't have to remember, memorize the number. Just punch it on your calculator. All right, so let's get to these last three problems, last two problems. Find the arc length. All right, so in both of these, we want the arc length. Key formula, remember, S equals R theta. That's from the previous page, right? S equals R theta. In this case, the arc length is x. The, ra um, the radius is given as 3 millimeters. I like to keep my units so I don't forget them. Here, the angle measure is given as 9 pi over 11. And do we want an exact answer? Then we'll leave pi in it. Do we want to round off? Let's give it both ways. So this is straight easy math, right? <coughs> 27 pi over 11 millimeters. And can somebody punch that out in their calculator for me and give it to me in a decimal form? 7.7, so 7.7 millimeters if you want to do a round off. So 27 pi makes sense. It's a simplistic formula. Now look, if you went around a complete revolution, then that would be another 2 pi, another 22 elevenths pi. For a grand total, the radio, or the um, angle then would be 31 pi over 11, right? One more time around. What if it went around 10 times? It's another 20 pi, right? And you can figure all those out. In the second situation, the angles in degrees, so be careful. It's still S equals R theta. And this time the arc length is given by N. Is distance ever negative? Do I want to use negative 120? No. Doesn't matter where that angle is located or which way it opens. Look, if that's negative 120, isn't that positive 120 going that way? It doesn't really matter. Its orientation doesn't matter. So it is 120 degrees. Well, let me do my radius first here. So 2.67 miles. And then I got 120 degrees. 
Now, surely no one's going to punch their calculator yet, right? Because way back with the formula, we had the asterisk and we said theta has to be in radians, right? So you got to convert this. <gasps> How do I change degrees in radians? I multiply times pi over 180. And now just punch it in your calculator. In this one, we already have 2.67. We're going to get a round off. Besides, it's kind of weird to have so many pi miles. So multiply 2.67 times 120 times pi divided by 180. And voila! Anybody got it? Anybody got it yet? Five point. That's it. 5.6 miles. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, because what? 57 degrees is going to be 2.67 miles, right? 57 degrees, 2.67. And we're double that. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. 5.6 miles. All right. You got up until Monday to get this done. Hey, my advice, Nationals people, do it tonight and get it over with. Take your book with you. How long are you on that bus? Five 